just reflecting on um, not only last night but the Crystal Palace game. What is wrong with your team that gets you to produce matches like that? And we spoke last night about Christian and you saying it, it wasn't good enough. But what is the problem at the moment with your team? Not scoring goals. Of not scoring goals enough. Um, that is uh, that's the problem. It's the key area you have to score more goals uh, as a team. I think we have players um, across the team who have the abilities to score. Uh, but um, yeah, that's clear. You, know, you see all the opportunities we are creating. But we're not scoring enough. So you've got Tottenham this weekend. First of all, anybody going to be available that has wasn't last night or any, any no, nights? No, I don't think so. I think it will be uh, the same squad as uh, yesterday. Uh, what are you expecting from the match? Is, uh, obviously, there's peaks and troughs in, in every season, <coughs> but it feels like a win would be a, an important shot in the arm at this stage. And, and what are you expecting from Tottenham? I think it will be a very intensive game. Uh, but it's, it's always against um, Tottenham. And it is, I think, also, yeah, it's, it's our style as well. So I think um, yeah, it's, it's going to be a very dynamic, uh, attractive game. Eric, you're talking about scoring goals being the big issue. How do you solve that? Is that as simple as personnel or is it something that has to be on the training pitch? I mean, how do you see that? Both. And you always work into a season and to, uh, yeah, you have to, to build it. Uh, that um, uh, the structures in defending, structures in uh, possession, of course, you start with the build up. I think we have the structures there quite right. Uh, we, um, across, uh, I, I think, almost all the games, uh, we have uh, more possession as the opponent. Uh, but then it's about what are you doing with your possession. Uh, and we, I think, we bring the ball into the final third, we bring the ball even into the box a lot. But now we have uh, to take more advantage, more benefit from it. Eric, Ange Postacoglu has talked about the philosophy side, having attacking teams being positive. In this moment, this situation, given what you've said about your squad, your players, does that help you at all in the way you set up and approach this game? That is, uh, of course, it's, um, every opponent has strengths and weaknesses. And Tottenham, uh, they have their strengths, definitely. And uh, in their philosophy, um, very clear, uh, uh, very uh, attacking, but that leaves also space. And uh, but that is um, yeah, what they take into uh, into account, and yeah, that can maybe can help. But you have to be very good against Tottenham. And uh, if you uh, want to control the game, um, then yeah, you you need again a high performance level, and. Yeah, then we will create again, I'm, I'm sure, but then yeah, take, in, take your chances. Neil. Um, Eric, you're in your third season now. Um, how can it be that the team um, can come from a game and say that they didn't try as much as the opposition, the opposition wanted it more? How, how can we be at that point? I, I think every team has this in, in a season, and eh? that is when you play 60 games and then uh, sure there will be games where uh, you are not happy uh, of course with the performance but you are not happy uh, where opponent wants more i think that is uh, also always the psychologically side of football and top football what takes part and where uh, any team is more hungry than the other and that yeah the team who can manage this the best, of course, they are the most successful, and they are, yeah, uh, we want, uh, we are ambitious. So yeah, you always demand from yourself, and uh, that you are the more hungry as your opponent. So, so you think your team needs to be hungry? We should be. That is what we demand from each other, and that is uh, that we have to bring in on a consistent base, and. That's what is why we are striving for. Successful teams has this. Josh has had a few chances this season. He's, his link-up play has been very good, but there's this. I think it was Ron Coomney said he's more for nine and a half. 
do you think that he can become a prolific goal scorer for Manchester United? Yes, I do. And it's it sure um, he is uh, he's young. Eh? He is, you, we see his uh, great abilities. He's a f um, very good link-up player, as you say. Um, he's creative. He's creating chances. But be fair also, um, he has his, uh, absolutely also his moments towards the goal from the opposition. Uh, yesterday as well, I think it was a great action he had with a, with a great finish as well. It was top save from the keeper. Uh, but yeah, in that area, he can definitely improve. But yeah, we know that on forehand, uh, he has some very good attribute and also some attributes uh, he has to improve. And there he needs our support how to improve. Hi Eric, just uh, following on from Neil's question, you've, you've been here two full seasons now, you've had five transfer windows, I think the spend has been about 600 million. Given all that, are the, are the fans of Manchester United not entitled to feel the team should be further forward than you currently are and playing with more consistency? Uh, are they not entitled to feel that? I think you have to assess then the situation and uh, and um, still now um, we we are working uh, as a, uh, and we are in progress uh, we still we have to sign players we also we made a choice to sign very young players um, like last year Hoyland like this year uh, Sirixe, uh like Lenny Yoro and that are players uh, who have a uh, yeah, we, we believe in them now in this moment but also for the future and we have to build them and uh, yeah and when I started yeah, uh, we spoke about more and we had to yeah, make a switch there in the dressing room and uh, I think we turned the corner and yeah, now we have to work with the squad and yeah, the, and that takes time and yeah, of course uh, I'm also <laughs> Uh, it's not a good uh, behavior for me. I'm impatient. I, I'm, I, I want to go straight forward. But I'll also be fair, we also had success in the last two seasons. And yeah, again, we have to, to work very hard to bring another success. I was going to say, do, do the fans have to be more patient then? Is that your message? Because some, some of them, no. understandably or maybe not understandably, <coughs> are losing patience and, and want to see the team further forward, you know, challenging uh, near the top of the Premier League and playing with greater consistency. Do they need to be more uh, patient or...? Oh, but you have also to be fair, <laughs> and I say it again, um, uh, that is, we won two tight of two trophies the last two seasons. Mm -hmm. and, and we want also this season, we are ambitious, don't, don't get us wrong. And we, and we want to, to win another one and we want to be as high as possible. And we go in every game and we will go for winning the game. doesn't matter who the opponent is. Eric, um, Bruno Fernandes is the one that sort of stays out there for the most uh, of the game, in, in the entirety of the game. But is he at all fatigued by the start of the season? It seems like he's not quite at the levels that we've seen of him previously. I think, um, we, I think the team brings him now in a situation and um, I think he is capable of and I think he has proven this so many years already in it. Um, in the Premier League, that he can uh, create uh, many chances, and I'm convinced he will this, this season. He will not do differently, and he will come on this point that he will find his form, and he will. Uh, he's already creating chances, but he will um, make final passes. He will score goals, uh, 100%, and that's just a matter of time. Did you enjoy that? There's so much more, so why not hit subscribe and download the Optus Sport app.